past section, and you could take any of those books and you we could preach expositorily and do well to do so. It'd be good, but it's kind of hard to give it the proper amount of time. So a lot of times when I'm preaching through these, it ends up being more of a topical type of a thing. And I'll tell you what, I was reading through Philippians. I really enjoyed going through Philippians. Got lots of things out of there that I uh, would love to preach on. But uh, what jumped out at me is there in verse 2, it says, Beware of dogs. Just that one phrase just jumped out at me. You know how it is, like everything else is blurry, but you got that one thing that's like bold. And it's just like, uh, I just feel like I got to preach on that. I got to preach. I can't remember. If I've preached anything by that title or on this subject before, maybe I have, uh, or someone else has, I don't know, but um, but I haven't, I don't remember anything right off, right off the top of my head. So uh, I was looking at that passage, and I said, well, I got to study it out and make sure I know what it's saying. And so I'm going to tell you what I think that's saying, and then I'm going to preach <laughs> kind of more a topical message that uh, really doesn't um, fit with this text so much. But that's okay. We can do that every once in a while. We've got the liberty to do it, all right? <clears throat> But it says, beware of dogs, okay? So think about this, the <clears throat> dogs today, like domesticated dogs. When we think about the word dog, uh, there's tons of different breeds of dogs that are out there. And they share an, an ancestor, you know, we don't know how deep to go into this. And it depends on, you know, which evolutionist you want to talk to, whatever. But they share an, SS, an ancestor of the, uh, the wolf from the wolf family. And then, of course, we have coyotes, we have foxes, jackals, uh, and the Bible mentions some of those types of, uh, of animals as well. <clears throat> and uh, it even mentions domesticated dogs. It doesn't use the word domesticated, but it talks about dogs which are used for hunting. It talks about guard dogs. It talks about sheep dogs that are helping in the flock. With, and so domesticated dogs was a thing. But what I want you to understand is that they weren't house pets, and I'm not preaching against that, okay? <laughs> they weren't house pets that were man's best friend, that you just, at least cute, adorable little things, okay? So when I say beware of dogs, don't be like, oh, what's wrong with dogs? No, no, no. Well, we're talking about is dogs that, you, <laughs> you know, we're making an application. We're going to apply it to people here. Uh, but we're making an application of something that, in that culture, they would have thought of as disgusting. All right, so don't be offended if I start talking about how disgusting dogs are and you're like, well, my dog's not that way. Just <laughs> follow what the Bible's talking about, okay? <clears throat> now, I want to show you this because I think it's very interesting. And uh, I've, I've heard this before. It, it, I, I lost it and I didn't remember it. But as I was reading through this, this jumped out at me, uh, what this passage is talking about. <clears throat> and you might be kind of shocked, all right? So typically in the Bible, most people understand this. When the, when the, in the New Testament, when they talked about a people group that they called dogs, what kind, just kind of large people group would you say that they're typically talking about? Well, no, that's true, but I'm talking about a larger group than that. <laughs> like that's definitely something that the Bible uses. I'm not talking about the, in this passage or, or anything. Right now I'm just saying like, you know, all right, all right, let's put it this way. When a Jew called somebody a dog... Who are they talking about? Gentiles, okay? Uh, it was just a non-Jew, you know, it's, it's, par it's partially uh, the interpretation here. So here's something very interesting about the church of uh, Philippi. There weren't any Jews. I mean, there might have been some Jews, but there wasn't a synagogue. Because we see, if you read in the book of Acts, uh, when he's going through Philippi there, uh, you know, whenever it comes a Sabbath day, they have to leave town to go find a synagogue. There's no synagogue there. So he's talking to Jews. I mean, I'm sorry, he's talking to non-Jews. And he's saying, beware of dogs. Okay, now, if he was talking to a Jewish audience, we would say, okay, well, he must be talking about Gentiles. Like, beware of these wicked people out there that don't know the customs of the law and all that kind of stuff. All right? Now, <clears throat> Here in Philippi, there's no synagogue. There's no, you know, these, he's actually talking to a church of Gentiles, whereas most of the churches he started in synagogues, he kind of built a Jewish base, and then there were Gentiles that were, at, that were added into that. And, of course, we understand that in Christ there's neither Jew nor Gentile, but just to, just to kind of help you understand their backgrounds, those were the people groups that were being reached. Some of them were having a hard time letting go of some of those things, all right? But here's what's really interesting in this chapter and I believe what he's doing here is he's taking, he's switching it over, and he's actually calling the Jews dogs. Okay, let me show you why. He says, "Beware of dogs, 
Beware of evil workers. You know what that reminds me of? Matthew 7, where he talks about, you know, those who are going to say, hey, I, you know, I did these wonderful works in your name. Uh, we're talking about dead works, right? And then he says, hey, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. And so, uh, you know, I believe he's talking about people who are going to claim to have all these works and they keep the law and they do all these good things. Uh, but really, they're evil. They're evil workers of iniquity, but they think that they're good. <laughs> and it says, beware of the concision. Okay, now this is the only place in the Bible, as far as I can tell, where this word is used. Whether you're looking in the Greek or just the English, only place where it's used. But what does it sound a lot like? Circumcision, right? And so concision basically has to do with, it's an, it's an, it's an archaic type of a, uh, the English word, uh, but it has to do with like cutting, mutilating, and such, all right? So think about this. What he's saying is he's talking about people who would put themselves under the law and go back to circumcision just in vain. Now, it seems a little weird because I recently talked about how he had Timothy circumcised, uh, and that's a whole different subject. I talked about why I think he did that and everything. But, you know, there were people that were trying to hold the Gentiles to the standard of, hey, you know, if you're going to go, uh, if you're going to be right with the Lord, if you're going to be, some of them would say you couldn't even be saved unless you were circumcised. It seems to me like he's saying, hey, beware of these people. Beware of dogs. Beware of, uh, 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 let me read it again. Uh, beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. Beware of the concision. And then he jumps to this. For we are the circumcision. I mean, try to tell a Jew or a, or a Zionist this today, <laughs> okay? We are the circumcision. Oh, you've been circumcised according to the law? No, because that's not important anymore. That's not what the circumcision is anymore. We are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Though I might have also have confidence in the flesh, uh, if any other man thinketh that he hath the way to... Uh, he might trust in the flesh, I more. So he's talking about, hey, look, I could easily say, and I am of the strict sect of the, of the Sanhedrin. You know, I've been, I was circumcised the eighth day of the tribe of Benjamin, and he can just go on and tell them all his credentials and say, you know, you need to live like I do. You need to be holy like I am. Uh, you need to go back under the law like I did. And he's like, look, we are the circumcision, not the concision, not the, the dogs, <laughs> right? It's like he's switching it on them. And it is kind of interesting how in, under the new covenant, it does kind of switch. And all of a sudden, the synagogue of Satan is referenced to, you know, Jews. Now, again, people get bent out of shape if you say that today, but this is what the Bible shows. And, uh, and all of a sudden, like these people who are Christians' enemies are the people that were supposed to be, you know, God's people. But they're no longer God's people, and it's, it's kind of like the roles have, have switched. It's a really interesting passage, okay? But it has nothing to do with what I'm preaching today. I just thought I would share that in case you thought that I was claiming that what he's saying here is something different than this. However, we do need to beware of dogs in the sense that I'm going to talk about today, okay? Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through uh, the Bible. I picked out, you know, a good representation of all the times in the Bible where uh, dogs are talked about, and I put them into these different categories, <clears throat> which describes behaviors, I should say, that you could expect out of a dog. And number one, hey, we need to not be, behave like this because we are not dogs, okay? But number two, we need to be aware. We need to be cautious and recognize that these people are out here and we need to uh, uh, just beware. <coughs> now, uh, you know, I forgot, I was going to back up this uh, just real quickly with what I was saying about the about the Jews, uh, it was interesting, I, I was reading in Psalm twenty-two, sixteen, 16, where Jesus says, or not Jesus, David says this, but it's prophetic, okay, about Jesus, and it says, for dogs have compassed me, uh, and the, the assembly of the wicked have enclosed me, they pierced my hands and my feet. Now, he could be talking about the Romans, because obviously Romans put him on the cross and all this, but the Bible's also clear that it were the Jews who said crucify him, the Jews put him on the cross, the Jews that were, hey, what are you going to do now, son, you know, uh, 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 son of God, you know, what are you going to do, king of the Jews, why don't you come down from there, you know, <clears throat> so here's what I'm getting at, what I'm talking about is not necessarily these dogs that have compassed me, right, 
It's not necessarily talking about Jews or Gentiles. Now, in that context, I thought that was an interesting thing to, to see Paul talking to Gentiles and seemingly calling those Jews who are trying to bring people under the law dogs. <clears throat> but primarily when the Bible's talking about dogs, like you don't need to think like, oh, he's talking about Gentiles or, oh, he's talking about Jews or anything like that. Here's what he's talking about, non-believers and people who act like we would expect non-believers to act. Now, Christians shouldn't act like non-believers. We would expect certain behaviors of the world and certain, you know, maybe lewd or gross things that they would do. <clears throat> it shouldn't even cross the mind of somebody who is a Christian. And so I want you to realize that, that we're not just talking about Jews or Gentiles, but we're just talking about wickedness that prevails in the, on the earth from people who, you know, in our natural state, and Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes talks about this, we're really no different than the animals, you know. They're evolutionists. Yeah, we're animals in the flesh, <laughs> right? We're like animals. We go to the grave just like animals go in the grave. Uh, we're made of meat just like animals are made of meat. And, uh, and, and, and it's the, the, what separates us is what God has put into us. And primarily, whenever we get saved and we receive the Holy Ghost, it makes us uh, somebody different. So look at Revelation 22. <clears throat> Revelation 22, <clears throat> verse 15. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. <clears throat> okay? <clears throat> and so we understand that this idea of being Dog is something that's not a compliment. It's not something that's good whatsoever. Now, let me give you some characteristics and some different types of dogs uh, that we see in, or characteristics of dogs that we see in the Bible, and then uh, we can get some application from that. Number one, I had to put this one first, vicious dogs, okay? Now, I don't know what the definition of vicious is, but when I see a dog, to me, they look vicious, <laughs> That's why the Bible says, hey, don't grab a dog by the ears, okay, or else you're going to get bit. Because dogs are vicious. And how many times have you heard somebody say, like, oh, don't worry, he doesn't bite? I'm not buying it. Man, if he's showing his fangs and he's barking and growling at me, I'm just going to assume that he's going to bite, right? Because dogs, man, they look vicious, and they can be vicious. This is why people do uh, domesticate dogs and train dogs to be killers. You know, why do the cops use canine units that will go after and, and grab some? Because they can be vicious, you know, they can be uh, pretty scary beings. When I, uh, uh, animals, when I was a kid, I used to have nightmares. Anybody ever, else struggle with nightmares about dogs? Man, when I was, and I think it's because I probably wasn't supposed to see it, but I snuck and saw it or, or you know, I was supposed to be in bed, but I watched, I don't know. I, but I do remember this as a kid watching Cujo. Anybody ever heard of that movie? It's from a long time ago, but it's a, it was a, I think, the, I think it had rabies or something, but it was more like it was demon-possessed. From what I remember, I was a really little kid, and this dog was just going around attacking people and, and killing them. And, and I had nightmares for, for a long time <laughs> because of that. And every time I saw a dog, well, here's another reason. Because when I was a little kid, I saw a dog, and I was scared, and I ran. And that was the first time I learned that you, don't run, you can't outrun a dog. And it ran up, and it bit me, and I had to get shots for rabies and stuff like that. I don't think it had rabies, but... Uh, they just in case and from that time forward I was scared of dogs I'm not now I mean you know I'll, most of the time a dog run up on me and I'll just scream at it and threaten to smack it but uh, at the time when I was a kid man I was terrified of dogs <coughs> and so uh, uh, and the reason why is because they're vicious this is why people carry sticks. Have you ever seen someone just walking? A lot of Asians would do this. You'll see them walking down the street or whatever. They'll have a stick in their hand. You're like, well, what is it? why are they carrying a stick? Man, it's a rod. And so they, if, if an animal starts coming and primarily you're thinking about a dog, they can say, get out of here, and they can, they can whack it. And so you see in the Bible where uh, Goliath is, uh, is, is yelling at David. And he's, the Philistine said to David, am I a dog that thou comest to me with staves? And the Philistine cursed David and his, by his gods. And so, like, if he's coming at him with, with sticks, he's saying, and, and, he's come, and he's like, hey, what am I, a dog? You know, because that's what we do. We want to we wanna have a weapon to get these vicious dogs out of here. And when you see their fangs and the growling and the barking, I mean, it's really intimidating. It's scary to see a dog, especially just a wild, uh, untrained dog. 
same is true with vicious people. Now, the problem is sometimes people don't always show their fangs. <laughs> you know what I mean? They'll wear a smile most of the time, but uh, in time, you'll learn that, that some people are vicious. Some people are, they fight dirty, you know, and they try to attack and they try to destroy you. And you see Paul struggling with this a lot of times in the ministry. Hey, this person tried to do me wrong. He'll call him out by name and he'll say, watch out for that person, right? He's vicious. He's a, he's a troublemaker and he's causing problems and he wants, to, uh, he wants to hurt us, whatever. And so there are people, obviously, who are vicious people who are just mean and hateful for whatever reason. <clears throat> and we need to, number one, purpose not to be like that. Number two, We've got to be cautious. We've got to keep other people out of harm's way, and we've got to stay away from vicious people. And if you're walking in the Spirit, you won't be like that. The fruits of the Spirit, you're not going to see somebody who's vicious. Somebody who you're afraid to, you're afraid to say the wrong thing because all of a sudden they're just going to, they're going to turn red, and you know, hairs are going to stand up on the back of their neck. And, and, it, it, and no, we shouldn't be like that. People should be, you know, feel free to tell us whatever they want try to correct us, try to ask us something, you know, challenge us as long as they're not being vicious about it. Uh, it, it shouldn't cause us to be so mean and hateful. That's a characteristic that is, is like animalistic, and it's not something that uh, God wants us to, uh, to have. So certainly we want to watch out for that. We want to walk in the Spirit and avoid being like a dog in that way, not to be these vicious dogs who just go attack uh, everything and everybody has to be on guard and they have to carry a stick and you know uh, uh, we don't want to be like that and we don't want to uh, bring those people in you know what I mean and, and feed that and allow it to go on without uh, putting it into it all right <clears throat> number two greedy dogs look at Isaiah 56 Isaiah 56 starting in verse 10 this is a, word, a phrase we still use today you greedy dog <clears throat> right? This is a biblical phrase. Isaiah 56, verse 10. Now, there's a lot of things we could say about greedy dogs, but I want you to notice this passage, <clears throat> how it relates to people, and particularly I want to talk about how it relates to some well, just wicked people who are, who are actually preachers, supposed preachers of God's Word, but they're greedy dogs, okay? And here's how you're going to spot them. <clears throat> All right, verse 10. His watchmen are blind. They are ignorant. They are all dumb dogs that cannot bark, sleeping, lying, loving to slumber. Now, that doesn't sound necessarily greedy, but here's what it says. Yea, they are greedy dogs, which can never have enough, and they are shepherds that cannot understand. They all look to their own way, everyone for his gain from his quarter. Now, this is interesting because you see here two characteristics about this do this, th these dogs that he's talking about. Number one, it says that they're dumb dogs that can't bark. Now, if you're a watchman, if you're a watchdog and you don't bark, that's not a good thing. Right? You, if you have a guard dog protecting your property, you know, letting you know if somebody's trespassing or whatever, and they're just like, they lift their head. Oh. But you're going to be upset with that dog because it's not doing its job. It's supposed to be barking. It's supposed to be be sounding the alarm, you know, wake up, wake up, somebody's on the property. <clears throat> so on one hand, you got these people who, for some reason, they're not barking. Some, for some reason, they're not alerting, you know, the, their people that there's danger. And on the other hand, you have uh, the second part of that verse where it says, they are greedy dogs which can never have enough, shepherds that can, cannot understand. And you see, these aren't like two different attributes necessarily. When it comes to people, oftentimes this is the same person, okay? So on one hand, you got them, hey, they don't speak up. They're not, uh, you know, they're not doing their job. They're not angry with, with I'm just going to make the application. They're not angry with sin. They're not angry with wickedness. They're not saying, hey, we got to quit this. We got to put this away. We got to do something about this. Sin's coming in. No, they're quiet because they really don't care about that. All they care about is fulfilling the flesh, getting the filthy lucre, getting ahead, having people that are going to be happy. You know what I mean? You don't want to offend anybody. Why? Because if you offend them, they might leave and then you don't get their money. You know, and, and I'm telling you that this is a lot of preachers out there. Okay, this is a lot of preachers. They won't preach what the Word of God says because it might offend somebody. 
And it's not because, oh, they're just so loving and kind. No, it's because they're greedy. It, it goes hand in hand. When you think of greedy, you think about like, oh, I don't care about anybody. I'm just going to step over people. No. Okay, so here's the thing about a dog. You, you can train a dog. The Bible says every animal is trainable, right? And James, James talks about that. Hey, we, we could tame any beast. Well, you train a dog, and, and the dog's not really, we talk about, you know, dog's man, best friend, and yeah, sure, they'll, you know, they'll lick you and, and all this kind of stuff. <clears throat> but, you know, most of the time, if they're doing what you told them to do, it's for one reason. Hey, they're going to give me a treat <laughs> after I do what they want me to do. And they're only, like, tickling you and in, in being behaving and doing what you want them to do because they want a treat, right? They want something out of it. And preachers today are the same way. Let me learn what to say to the people, how to pet them, how to scratch their back, how to tickle their ears so that I can get what I want. And they'll be like, oh, man, this has got the greatest preacher. Man, he does everything that a preacher is supposed to do. He doesn't offend anybody. He, you know, he checks all the boxes to be this great preacher. And they probably taught him in Bible college. Hey, you're going to keep people. You got to do this and you got to do that. And you got to make sure you don't offend people here. And, and uh, let's sit around and have these classes about how you can get more people and you can keep those people and all that kind of stuff. Hey, well, I'm telling you what, they're dumb dogs that don't bark and they're greedy dogs who are just, they just want stuff. They just want uh, the greedy dogs who can never have not satisfied. Well, we don't want to be greedy dogs for sure. You know, we want to just follow the Lord. We want to love the Lord and live the way he's, he wants us to live. And as preachers, as a preacher particularly, hey, I want, to be ha- I want the Lord to be happy with me first and foremost. Now, do I want everybody that I preach to to be happy and to, and to you know, care about me and love me and stuff like that? Well, of course I do. The expense of, of making God upset with me or God thinking of me as a dumb, greedy dog. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? I don't want to be like that. Uh, I want to serve him because I know that it's right and I know it's my job. <clears throat> it, sometimes you just don't do it because you just don't feel like it. But you know what? You, a dog has to say like, hey, it's my job to protect this property. <laughs> and if I hear something, I don't care if it's the mailman or whatever, I'm going after him, right? And I want him to fear for his life. And so uh, uh, we have to understand that this is... Uh, the same thing, you know, it's not like, hey, one person doesn't talk and then the other one's greedy and he'll just run over people. No, a lot of times that person that's the quiet and the smiley and never offends anybody or whatever, yeah, they're probably greedy, to be quite honest with you. <coughs> but the thing is, if a dog is not trained, like I said, if he's not trained, he's going to, uh, you're going to sit down at the table, right? You're going to get the table all, you know, set, the dishes out, the fancy food. All, you know, like I didn't get to see the food yesterday, but I heard it was real pretty and the way that it was arranged and all that stuff. You think a dog cares about that? No, a dog's going to jump up on the table, just, just devour it, right? Until it gets in trouble, until it gets taught that, hey, you know, you're not able to do that. And then, you know what it'll do next, though? It's just waiting for a scrap to fall on the floor. <laughs> as soon as that scrap falls on the floor, it doesn't care. It doesn't care what falls its way. It just, it just wants something. Give me anything. Right. And so the many times in the Bible, it talks about the crumbs. Hey, remember, Jesus uses the analogy like, you know, hey, it's not fit to give the uh, what's on the table to the dogs. Yeah, but we eat what the the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Yeah, yeah I don't want to turn there. So you, you remember what I, that verse. Right. And so um, this is the uh, just a characteristic of a dog, greedy dogs. So Christians shouldn't act like dogs. We should be willing to put others above ourselves. We should be able to put the Lord above, uh, you know, our lifting ourselves up and all that. We shouldn't just do whatever people want us to do in order to get them, uh, in order to get what we want. I love that the Bible always makes mention, it always makes us justice and mercy, you know. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, Micah, Micah 6, 8, you know, what um, he has shown the old man what is good. What did the Lord require of thee but to do justly and to love mercy? That's what God wants for us. Hey, do justly, do right according to God. Follow the laws, keep the commandments, do all those things, but at the same time, be merciful. And don't just like, hey, I'm just perfect and everybody else is, is way lower than me. That's not the same, you know, be merciful, but that doesn't mean to stop living uh, justly and righteously. 
All right, number three. Here's what you all really wanted me to talk about. Filthy dogs. Filthy dogs. Dogs will eat anything. That's partly why in the Old Testament, the dietary laws, dogs are considered unclean. Now, to this day, I don't know very many people who want to eat dogs. Now, I've been to Asian countries where <laughs> dogs are, uh, uh, you know, a meal in some parts. <clears throat> but typically, people don't, still don't really think about eating dogs. Mostly, I think that's because they've been domesticated and people are like, oh, I would never eat a dog. <clears throat> Just like people that won't eat deer because they watched Bambi growing up, you know. <laughs> but... Uh, if I'm starving, I'm eating a dog, you know, just <laughs> just to tell you. But uh, but see, dogs, the reason they're unclean, you know, same with a lot of the animals that were unclean in the, in the Bible. I can't say all of them for sure, but, you know, think about like catfish and, and animals like that. They would fit into the unclean category. Well, think about what catfish eat. They eat anything. That's why they're the easiest thing to fish for. That's why I fish for them, because I'm a bad fisherman. <laughs> right? You can throw anything out there, catfish. <laughs> Uh, probably catch it, uh, jump on it. And pigs, pigs, man, you just throw any slop out there, the pigs are going to eat it. That's why pigs are unclean. And another thing uh, the Bible talks about a lot. The Bible talks about pigs, I'll we'll come back to this verse later, but it talks about pigs uh, eating, the, I mean, I'm sorry, dogs eating their own vomit, right? They throw up and then they go away and then they come back like, oh, what's this? Eat it again, right? It's, that's gross. That's disgusting. We think about that as something disgusting. And yet the Bible says that we can be like that sometimes, right? I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me come back to that in a minute. <clears throat> they eat their own dung. That's disgusting, right? Who would, just to think about, I mean, if, if you don't oh, know, they don't eat their own dung. Well, yeah, they do. And I, we used to have a dog and, and I won't, I'll spare you the details. Okay. But they eat their own dung. And they clean themselves, you know, I'll spare you the details, but they clean themselves with it. Now, let me ask you this now. I'm sorry if you're a pet owner. I never have understood this. Why do people share their ice cream with their dogs? <laughs> like, oh, I got an ice cream. Oh, here, you want some? And then they lick it and they put it in the mouth. I'm like, do you know where that mouth has been? <laughs> do you know what that dog has been eating? Because dogs are filthy. Now, I know today people groom their dogs and they keep them clean and they make them smell good and feed them their own food and, and sometimes and all that stuff. But I'm just saying... When the description that we're talking about in the Bible, we're talking about a, a disgusting, vile creature, okay? We're not talking about foo-foo. <laughs> <coughs> Look at Exodus 22, verse 31. Outside the city walls of Jerusalem, uh, dogs would just wander around out there, kind of like cats today. If you're on a farm, there's cats that are out there, uh, uh, but also dogs would be the same way. Exodus 22, 31. And ye shall be holy men unto me, neither shall ye eat any flesh that is torn of a beast in, uh, in the field. Ye shall cast it to the dogs. Okay, so you come across some roadkill, you know, you have to be really hungry to even think about it. <laughs> you know, it's like, hey, just, that's unclean. You know, they didn't understand germs and stuff back then that well, I don't think. I mean, maybe they knew it better than we do. I don't know. But they said, hey, don't eat that. Throw it outside the city wall. Let the dogs eat it. Okay? They would also put dead bodies out there. Remember the story? Remember uh, Elijah talking about uh, Naboth and, uh, and talking about uh, Ahab and Je Jezebel? And, and eventually the dogs ate their bodies, like just, you know, came and, and they didn't have a proper burial. They had a, a very... Um, <laughs> crude burial, you know, that was a, a shame, shameful burial. You know, they, these were kings even uh, that, you know, you're supposed to give this proper burial and put them in the tomb and do all this kind of stuff, but they died in the field. They died a dog's death. Uh, they died a, a death where they were literally like eaten by dogs. And uh, of course, pigs eat uh, bodies and stuff too, but, uh, but, you know, this was kind of a, a job that was done by the dogs. <coughs> Now go to Deuteronomy 23, and I'll show you this. You're probably familiar with this, most people in here. One time, uh, uh, one sense of the word dog. Is I believe in reference to sodomites particularly. So Deuteronomy 23:18.
Thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore, and that's a reference to uh, a certain type of a woman, and the price of a dog into the house of the Lord thy God for any vow, uh, for, for even both these are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Now, you don't have to look very far in the Bible to find out sodom sodomy is an abomination. I mean, uh, of course, the Lord uh, destroyed Sodom with fire because of their sin, which is why Sodomites today have that nickname, because of the sins of Sodom. Okay? And even our world uses sodomy as a, as a reference to that. And so, like, don't be, you know, the Bible makes it very clear how wicked of a sin that is. <clears throat> and so, you know, I, I've heard people try to justify, like, well, no, see, what it's talking about, like, you have the whore who sells themselves for money, and then you have the, the sodomite here, it's called a dog. And so they would agree that this is a reference to sodomites. But here they'll say, well, sodomites were a particular group of people who sold themselves. And that's the only thing that God was right chasing in the Bible is that they were prostitutes, like they were male prostitutes. And it's like, I don't see that in the Bible. I see sodomites as being a reference to what happened in Sodom and Gomorrah. Okay, and it doesn't take long to put, you know, to put two together, read through Leviticus, go to Romans chapter 1. <clears throat> I know you want to go there, but I'm not going to. But, uh, but Romans 1 makes it very clear that there's type of people who are uh, who have unnatural desires, unholy desires. <clears throat> and these people are, um, you know, turned over to a reprobate mind to do all manners of wickedness. The Bible calls them filthy. And it's a perfect word for a sodomite. They're filthy. They'll do anything. And I don't want to go into descriptions, but you can kind of put the two together with a dog. Now, here's what's funny is, you know, I've, I've used the argument before many, many years ago. I think I'd be able to argue it a lot better now. But many years ago, I remember telling somebody who was trying to debate and trying to defend homosexuality. And I was like, you know, hey, it's unnatural. <laughs> and here's what they said. It's not unnatural. It's been observed in nature. Dogs do it all the time. And I'm like, did you just hear yourself? Like, say that again really slowly. <laughs> Yeah, it's natural for dogs, but it's unnatural for people, <laughs> okay? <clears throat> and if you, don't, if you disagree with me, fine, but if you disagree with the Bible, that's something different, okay? Because the Bible is the one that says it's unnatural. The Bible says it's vile and, and filthy, <clears throat> okay? So we're talking about uh, the fact that a dog um, is somebody who is... Is filthy. I mean, they're eating their own vomit. They're eating their own dung. They're, you know, eating dead bodies. You know, it's interesting. Uh, I don't take the time to go there right now, but there's a in Kings. It's talking about a time will come where there'll be this famine. You know, and I think that that literally already that already happened. But I think that you know, there's a time coming in our world where there's going to be another great famine. Right? The Bible talks about that in Revelation six, <coughs> where <clears throat> times are going to get real desperate again, like they were in, in uh, you know, that's going to be the wor worse than the times ever been. So, of course, you know, you could compare it to other times in the Bible. But this passage in, in Kings, and I don't remember where it is. You can find it on your, yourself. But it, it talks about how when that time comes, it talks about the, the most delicate among you. <laughs> I love that passage. Because, <clears throat> I mean, I don't love it, Pat. It, it, it's real. It makes a picture in your mind. The most delicate man among you, it says. And it talks about the women, too. With the woman, it's like, hey, she won't even put her feet on the ground. Like, hey, no, that's too hard for me. Like, she's so delicate, so soft. And it talks about men the same way, and it's talking about these guys that are soft. Now, we, hey, we just heard recently, Brother Austin is preaching on how effeminate means soft. Like, when it says soft raiment, you know, that's the same word for effeminate. And so, so these guys that are the most delicate among you, but it says that in this time... Because here's what everybody says about homos. They're like, oh, they're just the sweetest people. You know, they're just so nice. They're just so, okay. I've heard that my whole life as well. You know, oh, you just, you know what? If you can get one to come to church, like they would be great uh, uh, youth workers. I'm not kidding. People say that. And I'm just like, I would not let them around my kids. They're not coming into church. They're not coming around my kids. Okay, but uh, so that's what they'll say. Because they're so soft. They're so nice. They would never hurt anybody. I mean, watch some true crime and find out that all these people that are mass murderers, like not all of them, but a lot of times, common link, reprobates, right? They, they don't have any 
uh, you know, their mind's gone. They're just turned over to a reprobate mind. They'll do all manners of wickedness, okay? Now, this is a whole long subject of being a reprobate. I'm not getting into that right now. I'm just talking about dogs, all right? <laughs> well, we need to be aware of dogs. <clears throat> and in that passage where it talks about famine, it says the most delicate among you, it says, it starts talking about how they'll be eating children and they'll be eating humans and, and stuff like that. And I'm just like, okay. And it, and it says like, and, and they won't share it or something like that. And I'm just like, hey, no need to share, okay? <clears throat> you think that there are, you think that there's anybody, I'm sorry if this is a disgusting topic, but in a time of famine, do you not think that there are people in this world that would eat children? And I'm sorry, children, I, that's, that's a disgusting thing to think about, but the Bible talks about it. You think there's people that wouldn't, there are people that would do that. There are people using aborted fe fetuses and aborted babies, you know, different, different ways to, to, for cos cosmetic purposes or, or whatever. And you know what, anything they could do uh, to get ahead because they're greedy and they're filthy and there's, there's all kinds of things that we go, go down that line and talk about. Okay, so number one, we don't want to now. I, I don't believe that you have to worry if you're a Christian about, you know, ever being a reprobate. But the reality is, and Romans 2 talks about this, like, hey, you know, Christians can even fall into this category of like doing things that, man, why are you doing that? Like, that? like, that's something that you would expect the world to do. That's something that you expect somebody without Christ to do. Like, why would you do any of these, of these wicked things? Okay? We don't want to be filthy dogs. But also, we want to beware of people who are filthy dogs. And look, they're not always going to come across. They're not always going to announce what they are, you know. Uh, sometimes they're going to be wolves in sheep clo sheep's clothing. But we want to beware of them. <clears throat> you know, there are also, uh, here's another thing that could be a filthy dog in regards to the verse I was talking about, about eating, their, eating uh, your own vomit, Hi, you know, hypoth I mean, uh, symbolically, okay? Look at, Rev uh, uh, or uh, let me just read it to you. Proverbs 26, 11 says, as a dog returneth to his vomit, so a fool returneth to his folly. Okay, now I'm not talking about reprobates right now, but Christians, you know, they could get into this, this point where, they're going to keep going back to their sin. Hey, you know, I'm not in that sin anymore. I'm done with that. I'm living for the Lord. I never want to return to this. A couple days later, back in sin. You know, back in sin. Back in sin. Back in sin. And you know what they're being? Filthy dogs. You know, why would you want to go back to that? That's filthy. And they'll go right back to it because uh, they're being a filthy dog. We don't want to uh, ever do that. And we want to beware of people who are doing that. Now, I realize, forgive your brother 70 times 7. I understand that, you know, people can fall back into certain vices and, <clears throat> and stuff like that. But there comes a point where you're like, I'm going to be really careful about this person. I'm going to beware of them because it seems like they're not conquering this battle of the flesh. And so we want to be very careful. Okay, and then <clears throat> the final thing I want to talk about is this. And I'll put these together as a contrast, but... Dead dogs versus living dogs, okay? There is something worse than being a greedy, a filthy, a vicious uh, uh, dog, and that is being a dead dog, <laughs> okay? Look at Ecclesiastes 9. Ecclesiastes <clears throat> so happy I got my voice back, but I, you can probably tell I'm still struggling a little bit. Ecclesiastes 9, verse 4. For to him that is joined to all the living, there is hope. For a living dog is better than a dead lion. <laughs> it's interesting because, you know, we typically think of what, you know, maybe it's... Uh, Narnia, what's the full title? I can't remember, but Narnia, uh, Chronicles of Narnia, whatever, you know, they use a, a lion. And, and a lot of times there's biblical reasons for that. But, you know, a lot of times you I talk about a Christian, you think about a lion. And, and of course, Jesus being the lion of the tribe of Judah. <clears throat> a lot of times you think about Christian as, I mean, a lion as being a, a, a Christian, a good, a good thing, right? King of the, of the jungle. 
But you know what? A, even a living dog is better than a dead lion. <laughs> you, I don't know what you, I hate, I hate roadkill, man. If I'm going for a run <clears throat> and I'm getting ready to cross roadkill, I don't want to be anywhere near. I don't, I want to hold my breath because I don't want to smell it. Like, I don't want to look at it. It's, 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 it'll give you nightmares. <laughs> I'm running to the other side of the road because I don't want to see it. It stinks. It's gross. It's nasty, right? <clears throat> there's no life in it. It's dead. It's rotting. But, you know, at least there's some hope for a living dog, <laughs> you know. Uh, and so the same is true. You know, I already mentioned the Romans 1 type of reprobate who are, you know, good for nothing, which, which basically that's what reprobate means is rejected. Okay, so God's like, hey, I've rejected you. I've turned you over to a reprobate mind because you've rejected me and there's no hope for you. Basically, you're dead while you live. Like you're, you're already dead. You're pronounced dead. There's already a, a you know, reser reservation for you in hell. And no, that's not Calvinism. Okay, but <clears throat> we could preach on that another day. <clears throat> but there's also... I believe the Bible talks about another type of reprobate, if you will. Now, you got to remember words can, you got to define words and you got to have context for, for the words. And so, although a Christian can never be a reprobate in the sense that they can't lose their salvation and they, they're never going to be dead, okay? A Christian is always a living uh, being. But on this earth, even the Apostle Paul talks about, hey, I don't want to do this uh, lest I be a castaway, right? And, and when the Bible talks about bearing fruit, it's like if a, a branch, you know, it, it, you're attached to the vine and you're a branch. <clears throat> you're attached to the vine, that would be your, a Christian, right? You're attached to Jesus, who's the, who's the vine. He said, I am the vine, you are the branches. You're attached to him. But it says if that branch isn't producing any fruit, I mean, you, it's, you've given it every opportunity. You've, you've pruned it, you've cleaned it, you've washed it, fertilized it, done everything you can, and that branch isn't producing fruit. Look, for the sake of illustration, that Branch hasn't lost its salvation, like it's still a branch that was in in the vine. Okay, but we're talking about we're talking about uh, our our vessel now, like our our human body as opposed to our soul. Our a uh, Christian's human body can get to the point where it's good for nothing. It's like a castaway. It's good for nothing but to be thrown into the fire. And we're not, not talking about hell. It's a this is okay. This is an illustration. Same as salt. Salt loses its savor. It's good for nothing but to be trampled on by the feet of men. Okay, so as Christians, because I'm not talking to any, I don't think I'm talking to any reprobates in here, okay? I'm talking to Christians. So as Christians, you don't want to be a castaway. You don't want to find yourself as a Christian saying, you know what? I'm really good for nothing. I mean, I'm not bearing any fruit. I'm not bringing people to the Lord. I'm not bringing any pleasure to God. I'm just selfish, I'm greedy, I'm, I'm vile, uh, uh, vicious, you know, all these things. I'm like a dead dog. I might as well just be a dead dog, right? But you know what? I don't think there's anybody in here that's even, like, that's even gone that far. I believe that there are probably Christians who are backslidden. I believe there are probably Christians who, hey, I'm good for nothing, I'm not doing anything for the Lord, I'm not bringing it, you know, but they're still living. They're still joined to the living. They're still connected. There's still hope for them. You know, they're, they're not a dead dog. <laughs> they're a living dog. Uh, they're not a dead dog. Now, obviously, a reprobate, like I said, is they're someone who's dead while they, while they live. Okay, but, but I'm talking about spiritual reprobate. But as a Christian, look, there's hope. And I do believe, too, that there's unsaved people who are doing things that on first thought were like, hey, that's a reprobate. But maybe there's hope for them. Maybe they're not a reprobate yet. They're still joined to the living. There's hope for them. All right? So I, I think it's interesting the Bible talks about that, hey, there is something worse than a dog, vile dog, vicious dog, all these things, and that is a dead dog, okay? But we want to make sure, number one, we're uh, beware, we're, we are aware of the fact that any of these wicked type people could be around us. We want to also be aware that we could fall into some things that would make us dog-like, right? But what we want to focus on is the fact that if there's hope, if there's a glimmer of hope in that person who you're concerned for because they're, they're not showing any fruit, they're, uh, they're showing behavior that seems pretty wicked, if there's hope for them, we need to do everything we can to get them that help, get them on the right track. And if we're searching in our own hearts and we see like, man, I have really got to get out of this, Hey, there's still hope. If you're even thinking that thought, then there's still hope for you.
if you're not just loving your sin, just loving wickedness, hey, what can I do to get out of here? And, you know, I can't wait till I get out of uh, under my parents' authority so I can live in wickedness or, or whatever thoughts going through your mind, that's a real big problem. You know, but if you're just like, man, I, I, I wish I could just break this. I wish I could stop this sinful life. I wish I could stop being useless and, and not uh, uh, fruitful at all for, for the Lord. Hey, there's hope for you. There's hope for you because you do want that. And so we need to do whatever we can to get you in the right shape so that you cannot be a dog. We need to beware of dogs. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for uh, this illustration throughout the Bible of uh, what in, throughout history many times has been considered as the most uh, just vile creatures and disgusting creatures. We realize today that not all dogs are that way, but uh, Lord, I, I, for the purpose of this illustration, Lord, help us uh, realize just the possibility of the wickedness that's out there and how low that we could go and how um, uh, just useless we could be for the cause of Christ. Lord, I, help, I, I pray first and foremost, everybody in here would decide to, that they want to be fruitful for you and bring glory to your name. And they want to be in fellowship with you and live right. And I pray that you help them repent of uh, wickedness in their lives so that they might walk with you and be holy. <clears throat> and that's save people, Lord. But I also understand that there are unsaved people out there who need to know you. They need to be saved. They need to come to knowledge of Jesus Christ. And I pray that you help us go out and find those people before they become reprobate. Find those people before they're just dead dogs, Lord. And I pray that you help us do that. I thank you for the soul winning efforts of this church. I pray you continue to bless and be glorified in it. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> All right. Let's stand and be dismissed.